Right now, we're going to discuss what I do to the James Suckling Top 100 list. Hey, it's that time of year again. Um, the Wine Spectator, James Suckling, and the Wine Enthusiast all put out like top 100s. Um, James Suckling and Wine Spectator put out their top 100. The Wine Enthusiast puts out their top 100 values. Welcome back to Drinking It In. I am your host, Chris Cassara. We are here to help you know more and drink better. And um, I, in the intro, I said, uh, I'm going to tell you what I do to the James Suckling. This is really, I'm going to tell you what I do with the James Suckling Top 100. Um, his uh, wine, the Top 100 wine list is usually very expensive, right? Um, most of the bottles are well over $100 and typically not bottles that I buy. But what I do use his list for is as a reference point, a reference point for producers and vintages and wines that, that he and the critics and his team of critics loved, uh, and then apply that to uh, some of the uh, other wines, either from the producer or the, um, you know, the vintage and appellation that seems to show up a lot on the list. You know, I think that's that's at least how I'm going to guide you through some of the wines that I'm targeting. I'm looking at um, 15 wines in total, so we'll go through them. I think at a at a high level, right? Um, Italy, France, U.S., and Germany, respectively, were the bigger uh, or the most well representative. I, it was 26, 18, 15, and 12, respectively, and that makes sense given the coverage areas uh, that the team. Um, you know, tend to focus on. Uh, but it was also good to see a bunch of Austrian wines and a bunch of Sicilian wines make the list. So, you know, those, those wines are, those areas are wine, you know, areas that I love. And um, it's good to see that they're getting uh, some recognition from, you know, on, on lists such as this. So let's, um, let's talk about the wines that I'm at least targeting, looking for, would consider buying. Um, and um, as well as the the alternative scenarios that I'm looking at. So I'm going to start with. Uh, we're going to go from. Um, I'm going to go from the lowest number to the highest number, right? Um, I may take a different tack to the wine enthusiast list. I might take a different tack to the wine spectator list. You'll have to watch those to find out. Um, number six on the list: 2021 Vic Valle de Cachapoal. Um, Vic is a winery from Chile. We've talked about it on uh, this channel. We've had their, uh, their Vic Red Blend. It's insanely good. I would consider buying this. Very few wines, very few that I like go over $100 a bottle on. Uh, the wines from Vic, I really, really, we really enjoy. And that's, there, there's a wine that I consider um, paying the freight for. Um, number seven on the list, the 2021 K Vintners, Motor City Kitty Syrah. Uh, we're big fans of the Charles Smith wines. This Syrah seems right up my alley. I think it's uh, it can be had for around $40. And I'm looking forward to getting a bottle of that soon. Number nine, the 2022 Tenuta Terenera. Remember I say I always sound like uh, pompous ass when I, when I say this, the winery's list. It's an Etna Rosso. This is the Calderona Sotana. Um, it's more of a single vineyard. So this is going to be too expensive for my taste, but the Tenuta Terenera Etna Rosso can be had um, at a reasonable, a reasonable price. So that is something where I would say, you know, look to trade down, look for the producer, look to trade down. Number 12 on the list, 2023 Marcus Huber, Gruner Ventliner, uh, Trenenthal. This you can have for 20 bucks, always looking for good Gruners. Uh, they're great wines, um, great whites for even for Thanksgiving, right? Um, but you know, that's it's good to see. Um, it's good to get to know some more producers of uh, you know of Austrian Gruner Veltliner. Number thirteen on the list is the 2021 Castella Diana uh, Diama, excuse me, Gran uh, Selezione um, Chianti Classico. This one's expensive, right? But the regular Chianti Classico. From Castella di Ama is um, you know can be had under fifty dollars and is going to be a delicious wine. You're not going to miss anything by going that route. Number twenty eight, two thousand twenty two, 
Factoria Le Pupile, uh, Marema, Marema Safrede. This is one of their higher end wines. Um, you know what? If you don't want to spend a hundred and whatever dollars that you can buy their Morellino di Scansano. We did a video on this uh, before, pretty recently actually. Fantastic wine, um, I think less than $20. So, you know, go that route when you're looking, uh, when you see that producer. Number 29 on the list, 2019 Travellini Gattinara Reserva. Um, this wine has that, it's got that, uh, you know, patented bottle. It's got a kind of a kind of cool shape. Um, you don't have to necessarily spring for the Reserva. You could just go for the regular one. Um, and you know, those are pretty, pretty widely available and always, uh, always delicious. Uh, number 36, 2022, Moric Blau Bergenland, Lutz a la Rieben. Um, I'm looking, I'm, I'm noticing a lot of, uh, again, this is another Austrian wine. It's, um, it's a Blau Frankish, sorry, it's Moric Blau Frankish is the wine. Um, this, you know, Blau Frankish is, a, is kind of a neat varietal, doesn't get a lot of pub. It's grown in, um, you know, in Austria, Germany, and in some, some, um, sometimes you see it in some of the north, more northern um, regions in the U.S., like the Finger Lakes or something like that. Worth checking out. 42, number 42, 2023, Girolamo Russo, Etna Bianco, San Lorenzo. So this is, um, this is an $85 wine. Uh, Etna Bianco, I'm not sure of the blend. I probably should, uh, probably should put some details right here and, and give you some more background on it. But I bring this one up because um, I've seen a lot of Girolamo Russo wines on the shelves, and they have really catchy labels. They're they're funny, you know, they're funky. They got little paintings on them, and I always, in my mind, thought they were a little cartoonish, and it sort of sent me in another direction. Um, but they have a lot of wines at reasonable prices, and I think if you you know knowing that this one really you know piqued the interest of some of the critics. Let's start exploring some of their more reasonable wines and see what they're like. Number 46, 2021, Montes, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Valle de Maipo. Um, Muse, looking at my notes, sorry. Uh, this is a high-end Cabernet from, uh, from the folks in, at Montes in Argentina. Uh, but you can have their regular Cabernet for $15 or so, or their regular Syrah for $20 or so. So let's... Let's go there, and um, you probably get plenty of enjoyment out of uh, a bargain bottle. Number 47, 2021, Isola e Olena uh, Toscana Ceparello, right? This is their high-end, like super Tuscan, really expensive, but we've talked about this wine before. This is just the Isola e Olena uh, Chianti Classico. This wine is my favorite Chianti Classico wine, favorite class, Chianti Classico producer. You can have this wine for some, in the 30s. Um, it may have, I don't know if the price continues to creep up, but you know what? I don't think you need to spring for the Ceparello. Uh, you can go there and um, have just as good of an experience. Um, number 48 is the 2022 BB Greats uh, Toscana Colore. Okay, this is $270. I'm not going to be buying that. They actually do a red and a white version of the Calori. But what I think is important to know is a BB Greats, fantastic reputation. He makes great wines um, out, of, out of Tuscany. Um, Calori may be out of your price range. Testamata may be out of your price range at $100. And again, red and a white, it's all blends. But they make a Casamata that you can have for 20 bucks and it's, you can find it pretty regularly. I'd be curious to explore that. I haven't had any of those. I haven't had any, nobody, I haven't tried any of those wines yet, but uh, I'm going to start with a Casamata. If I see a Casamata on a shelf, I'm going to pick it up, whether it's red or white, maybe we'll taste it together. And, um, you know, and then we'll see, do I want to go up the ladder? Do I need to spend $270 um, on a uh, James Suckling favorite? Probably not, but you know, at least you kind of know what, you, what you're getting. Number 54 is a 2021 Duimani uh, Cabernet Franc from Tuscany. I thought, you know, I, it, 
Italy grows a sneaky amount of Cabernet Franc, and I thought this was would just be a fun one to try. So if I happen to stumble upon it, I'll um, you know I'll, I'll I'll take it. And um, the last one I'm going to talk about is number fifty eight, uh, two thousand twenty Vietti Barolo Monvigliato. Monvigliato. Um, this is one of their single vineyard uh, Barolos. Uh, Vietti, there's a lot of Vietti wines, right? Whether, uh, whether that's Barolos or any of the other varieties that they produce, um, from, uh, from the, you know, the Piemonte area. Um, you know, they're, they're gorgeous wines, they're gorgeous labels. You can get the Barolo Castiglione, I think still for around, uh, between 50 and 60 bucks. And that one is a bargain. And I would go there instead of, you know, breaking the bank with the Monvigliero. Um, I don't know if you spend time with these lists in a similar way. I'd be curious what your uh, what you think of um, the top 100 list. I'd be curious what you think of James Suckling. He's not my favorite uh, wine critic, not somebody that I tend to align with, but the uh, the top 100 lists that they put out, um, I always find value in. So, um, you know, let me know your thoughts. Hey, if you're, if you're, uh, you're not subscribed here, because I know 97.7% of you are not, you know, hit that subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me if you were uh, if you were on board. And I will uh, talk to you guys soon.